Okay, so welcome to this video. In this video, what we're going to discuss is circadian rhythms. Okay, so we're going to start off with the definition of a circadian rhythm. Then what we'll do is we'll see examples of circadian rhythms. Okay, we'll then see how circadian rhythms uh, are organized and we'll then go on to a study of the internal clock within humans, which is the super, uh, suprachiasmatic nucleus within the hypothalamus. Okay, right, so let's start off with uh, what a circadian rhythm is then. So firstly, let's start off with where this word circadian came from. Okay, so basically it came from two Latin words. The first is circa, which means approximately, okay? And then the second is dies, which means day, okay? So approximately, proxim, sorry, struggling to spell now, approximately, okay? And then uh, dies means a day, okay? So basically circadian means that it la whatever this is, it lasts approximately a day. So it's a rhythm that lasts approximately a day. Okay, so basically circadian rhythms are things which uh, cycle round and round again and round. And uh, the period for a cycle to occur is a day, basically. So, the most obvious starting point for the discussion of a circadian rhythm is the light-dark cycle, because that's something that cycles on a 24-hour loop, okay? So let's start with a little cosmological picture. So, let's let this be the sun here. So I'll cover the sun in orange, okay? And we've then got the Earth orbiting around the sun, okay? So here is the sun. And now let me draw the Earth as well. So we'll have the Earth here. And we all know that the Earth orbits around the Sun. Okay, and that, that orbit around the Sun takes a year to occur. Okay, but whilst the Earth orbits around the Sun, it's also spinning on its axis. So let me just sort of colour in the Earth then. Okay, so blue and green, that's distinguishable as the Earth. Okay, uh, so whilst the Earth does this orbit around the Sun, what happens is it's also spinning on its axis. So its axis isn't uh, perpendicular upwards, instead it's on a sort of angle like this relative to the Sun. Okay, and then what will happen is the Earth will spin around on this axis. Okay, and this is why we have day and night, because uh, during the daytime, we are facing the sun, and then during the night time, we are facing into outer space, basically away from the sun, and the other side of the Earth is facing the sun. Okay, right. So, we can plot this on a graph, basically. Okay, so if we plot time on the x-axis, okay, so I'll be drawing a lot of graphs like this during the course of this video. So, let's plot time on the x-axis. And then we'll have time going from 0 to 24 hours. So here is 6 hours, here then is 12 hours, here is 18 hours, and then finally 24 hours over here. And basically, let's now plot level of light on this side. Okay, so we'll have day, and then we'll have night. So let's say we're currently in summer, so it gets light at around 4 or 5 a.m. and then goes dark at around 10 p.m. Okay, so it's night during this sort of hour here between 0 and let's say 5 a.m. Okay, and then it's going to suddenly start becoming light, basically. So it'll go up to day and then it will continue in the light for uh, a good few hours. Okay, and then we'll say it continues on to around 10 o'clock at night, so that's around here, and then it starts to go down. Okay, right, and then the next day it will repeat the exact same thing again. This is an example of a circadian rhythm. It uh, repeats on a cycle um, on a 24-hour basis. Okay, but we're more interested in biological circadian rhythms, circadian rhythms that are occurring within the body. Okay, so let's talk about the first obvious one then uh, that's linked to day and night, okay? So uh, we'll have uh, awake and sleep, basically. 
So let's plot whether you are awake or whether you are asleep um, on a graph just like this. Okay, so we'll have time on the x-axis here, and this time will vary from 0 to 24 hours. So here's 0, 6, 12, 18, and then 24 hours down here. And this is time on the x-axis here. Okay, and then we'll have two states. This one can be quite binary. Okay, so we'll have sleep down here. Okay, and then we'll have awake. And I'll have to move these graphs out a bit next time because I'm struggling to label them up. Okay, so this upper state here will be awake, and this down state here will be sleep. Okay, so let's say you sleep from, let's say, 10 o'clock at night to 6 o'clock in the morning. Okay, uh, so you'll be asleep all through this period here. Then you'll go into the awake state at 6 o'clock in the morning. You'll stay awake uh, throughout the day. Okay, and then at around 10 o'clock, you'll go to sleep. Okay, and then that cycle will repeat on a 24-hour basis. So that's another example of a circadian rhythm. So awake slash sleep. Okay, now some more physiological examples that also work on this same 24-hour cycle. Okay, so for instance, body temperature, growth hormone level, and cortisol level also show 24-hour cycles. So let's discuss these. So next up, we'll do body temperature. Okay, so basically body temperature uh, is higher whilst you're awake than it is whilst you're asleep. Okay, so let's see this. So we'll assume that this is your sleep-wake pattern here. Okay, so uh, on the 24-hour basis then it cycles. So we have 0, 6, 12 hours, then 18 hours, and then 24 hours over here. And then the two body temperatures that you can vary between are 37 degrees Celsius, which is your body temperature whilst awake, and then 36 degrees Celsius, which is your body temperature whilst asleep. Okay, so we find that body temperature will be lower during the night whilst you're asleep, and then when you get up, it will go up, okay, and then it will remain at high whilst you're awake, and then it will go back down, and it will fluctuate just like so. Okay, so it's also showing a circadian rhythm. Okay, uh, next up, let's do growth hormone level and also cortisol level. Okay, so again, on another diagram like this, and I think I'll show both hormones on the same diagram. Okay, because I haven't really got room to put another one of these in. So here is the time axis again, 0, 6, 18 and then 24 hours over here. So this is time on this axis, okay? And uh, then we'll have hormone level on the y-axis here. Okay, so basically for growth hormone, growth hormone goes up uh, dramatically when you go to sleep, okay? Now this is why it's difficult because I have chosen you to go to sleep at um, around um, 22 hours, basically, 10 o'clock at night, okay? So it's quite difficult to show this because that is right near the end. It would have been better probably to have chosen to go to sleep at midnight so that I could show it right at the start here. Okay, but we'll have to just make do. So when you go to sleep at around 20 hours, what will happen is the growth hormone level will spike dramatically, okay? And then it will come down, okay? And then throughout the day, it will remain low, 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 low. And then when you go to sleep, it will spike. Okay, so this also shows a circadian rhythm. It repeats. So this one in pink, this is growth hormones. So you get a burst of growth hormone when you go to sleep. And this is occurring on a 24-hour uh, cycle and therefore is a circadian rhythm. Okay, so in pink, this is growth hormone. Then we've also got cortisol. Cortisol also shows a circadian rhythm of uh, level within the blood, okay? Uh, and it goes up as you are awake, basically. So it will be low whilst you're asleep. So let's start it low here. And then as you're getting ready to wake up at around 6 o'clock, it'll go up, and then it will stay high for the morning, and then it will gradually sort of tail off and then in the evening it will go down, down, and it will be getting ready for you to go to sleep there, okay? So this is cortisol level here. 
Okay, so all of these physiological things show this circadian rhythm, basically. So you could can measure many different physiological parameters and find that they vary on the 24-hour cycle and therefore are circadian rhythms. Okay, let's now give an interesting example because at the moment you might think, well, it's obvious what regulates all of this. It's this here, okay? It's sunlight, daytime, and uh, darkness, night, okay? That's regulating when we are awake and when we are asleep, and um, it will then also indirectly regulate our body temperature and then these hormone levels as well. So everything's just responding to light might be your initial conjecture, but it doesn't quite work like that because if you put someone where there is absolutely no daylight, then these sort of things still cycle in the same way, okay? And I'll give you a, a drastic example of that with, that was discovered long, long ago, okay? So people, for a very, very long time, until very recently, until the last century, thought uh, that, you know, we were just responding to light, basically. But then, uh, actually quite a few centuries ago now, an experiment was done in plants that suggested otherwise, basically, that potentially biological systems could have a way of telling what time it is without using light. Okay, right. So, I'm going to give you the example of the mimosa plant. Okay, right. And this plant raises its leaves in the uh, daytime and lowers its leaves at night. So let me just draw you a little picture of the mimosa plant. So the mimosa plant sort of has a flower at the top which has many little sort of processes sticking out like so. So that's its flower. And it's got these leaves like so, which have multiple sort of little bits coming off like this. Okay, so little stems with little bits coming off. Okay, so this is a mimosa plant. Okay, and basically in the daytime, the mimosa plant raises its leaves up, okay? And then in the evening, what it does is it lowers its leaves back down, basically. Okay, so everyone thought that it was just responding to light. You know, it would raise its leaves in response to the light, and then when it went dark, it would lower its leaves back down again. That makes sense, because it raises its leaves in the light to maximize photosynthesis, and then lowers them in the night when there's no light, so photosynthesis is very, very low. Okay, right. Uh, however, a very simple experiment can therefore be done which is what happens if you take the mimosa plant and put it in a dark room, does it permanently keep its leaves down then or does it continue to move them up and down? Now you might expect that it would just keep them down permanently, but it, no, it still continues to cycle. So let's draw one of these graphs again, okay? So I might try shrinking them down a little bit now. So let's have time on the x-axis and then we'll have two states. Uh, the leaves can be either down or they can be up. Now, of course, they can be somewhere in between as well, but we'll keep it nice and simple. Okay, so then let's have a 24-hour clock here. 0, 6, 12, 18, and then 24. Okay, so during the night, the leaves will be down, and then during the daytime, the leaves will gradually move up. They'll stay up there until uh, evening and then the leaves will move down and then they'll stay down and then they'll repeat the whole thing over and over again. Okay, so it's a nice circadian rhythm. Now basically, if you put this plant uh, in a darkened room, it continues to do this at the same time each day, i.e. it raises its uh, leaves uh, even when there's no light, but it raises them when it would be daytime, basically, and then it lowers them at night time. Okay, so the plant has a way of keeping time that doesn't rely on uh, the sun, basically. It doesn't rely on daylight and night. Okay, and that was the first real experiment that showed that this biological system had a way of telling uh, whether it was day or night, basically, without just measuring the level of light. Okay, so we'll call it there for this video, and in the next video we'll continue this discussion.